guys welcome look what i have here <laughs> um okay i'm gonna hide this for a second so today is wednesday it's kind of like uh morning ish but i wanted to start today's or i guess like this next few weeks reading vlog because i'm going to be reading the priory of the orange tree and I'm very excited. So I was kind of always planning to read this at some point in my life. Like every time I go to Barnes and Nobles and I am perusing for hours and I'm in the fantasy aisle, I see this bad boy, this brick of a book, and I consider getting it. Because, you know, I've heard such great things about it. Um, I know there are kind of mixed opinions, but I feel like for the most part, a majority of people really like this book. And I also just thought it'd be a really fun challenge for myself because it's such a big book. But point is, I wasn't really planning on buying this book anytime soon. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I talk a bit about how I'm living in a temporary space and I'll be moving really soon. I move in about three weeks, but I went to my family's house over like Thanksgiving break and um, they bought me this book. <laughs> so I was really excited and grateful and I'm very happy about it. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to vlog my journey while reading this and I did already start. I started it yesterday and I got up to page 35. I'm already super excited about like this journey I'm about to go on with this because I just, I love fantasy but I don't read it as often as I should but I always feel so inspired when I read fantasy. I don't know what it is about it. I just feel so inspired by like all the world building and just how complex the characters in the world and like the hierarchies and the magic system can be. So I started this yesterday and I got three chapters in and I'm honestly pretty impressed by how like I guess accessible this book is especially because for anyone who reads fantasy you know that like Getting into a fantasy book is kind of like a challenge at times because you're learning about the world and about, you know, a plethora of characters and their relationships to each other and everything. It has an air of complicatedness because it comes with like this map in the front and then another one. So it like represents the east and west and so it goes between um, the east and west point of view and I really like it so far um in the west you're following like this queen but you're not you're not actually following her you're following one of her like um boys <laughs> I don't know what you would call her she has like a you know really fancy official title name but she's basically there you know to help protect her um so you're following her her name's Eid and then in the west you're following um Tade or I don't know. I literally had to look up like how do I pronounce all these names because they're very like fantastical creative names and the author actually answers a bunch of questions on Tumblr and like answered a bunch of questions I had while I was reading this so that was nice. But yeah you're following this other girl in the east who is like becoming an adult and there's basically like this ceremony where you get to either be like a major part of society where I think you get to like be more um, in tune with the magic and like you get the opportunity to like ride dragons and stuff or you get the other um, the other end of the deal which is something else I'm not completely positive about but it's the less wanted one and I can already tell that I really like the character of Eid, and I already know that there's a sapphic romance in here. I don't know if it's like that big of like a part of the plot, but um, that is one of the main reasons I picked this up because I knew that. All I really knew going into this was that there was a sapphic romance and it was fantasy with dragons. Like I did not need to know more. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading some more of this today and I'll let you guys know what I think.
it is me many days later um it has been an interesting journey so far reading this book i just wanted to give you a little bit of an update i am 96 pages in so far and honestly i am really liking this so far every time i pick it up i'm extremely intrigued there is so much to digest so much storytelling i would say the main characters you're following are the characters in the east and west so in the west you're following Eid, and she is there to protect the queen sabran and you can tell that there's like something there there's something happening there and also this far in you learn that Eid is from you know like an allied um country basically where the queen is and she basically moved there like eight-ish years ago to serve the queen but she has like an ulterior motive for sure and it's to protect her it's not anything like nefarious but she's also like definitely like holding a secret and yeah there's stuff we don't know about her but you can tell like she grew up in a different place so she is kind of just pretending to go along with whatever this kingdom sort of agrees with because she has this different motive and i just really like her a lot you can just tell she's really headstrong and she's really confident and she talks to the queen like she's just another person which is a really interesting dynamic i really find myself liking the queen as well like i want to know more about her so it's cool because in the west you're following this complete like system and hierarchy of this kingdom and there's so many different lands in this world so it's so interesting because basically in the west their um their society worships like queens and kings and so Bronze family ha is like this you know has a really long lineage whereas the east they worship dragons and sorts of like alchemy and sorcery but i feel like we're starting to learn that you know it's not as black and white as that also in the west you're following this character loth and kit they're these two guys and Loth is a mutual like best friend of the queen and of Eid. So that's really interesting because they're both close to this one person, but him and the other guy Kit are being sent away. Everyone thought that Loth and Sabran were too close. So someone sent him away because they were like, this is not working for us. Anyway, yeah, it's it's pretty complicated and I'm sure I'll have so much more to tell you about the West point of view, but for now, just know. I am loving Eid. She's definitely my favorite character, really into her story and plot line. Then in the East, it's sort of unclear. It's not fully fleshed out as much as the West's perspective yet. And there's another character as well um, in the East who you're following, who was basically like exiled to the East because he was trying to create something that basically made mortality not a thing like you could be immortal anyway yeah i'm really really liking this so far i just love how immersive it is you definitely are learning a lot at once but i don't know i don't feel like it's too much and like i said i'm 100 pages in i started tabbing i started writing in this too i wasn't sure if i was going to do that but then like as i was reading it i just had so much like commentary going on in my head that i just started writing it in the book so yeah that's what's been happening i'm gonna keep reading for today and i'll catch you guys up next time i chat with you all right it is many hours later it is almost 8 p.m and i've gotten really far in this today i'm really glad that i got to this point because you know when you're reading a book when you're first getting into something i feel like for me at least I know there's going to be a moment where I get like totally hooked and I want to keep going but sometimes it takes a minute to get there and I will say today I think was the day you know it's the weekend it's Saturday I didn't really have anything to do today and I have gotten up to page 206 now so yeah you guys I am totally 
totally getting so like immersed. I've been reading for hours now and I just put this down and I just feel like out of my body. <laughs> so much is happening. I'm so into it. I'm growing attached to the characters and I'm just having a really good time and I'm so happy because, you know, this could have not gone this way. Let me do a little bit of a recap. We're following mostly still Sabran and Eid and Kit and Loth in the West. And so far, what's going down, basically, is we'll start with the boys, okay? They're in this other kingdom, country, whatever, where they used to be like in allegiance with their home kingdom um but they just recently switched religions basically like they just recently um revoked their loyalty towards queen sabran and her power so they sort of have beef they're not like complete enemies but they sort of have beef because you know they used to be um on the same side and now they're not and so that's where the two men are because, you know, like I said, Loth was getting too close to the queen and everyone's too worried about her, you know, getting wed and having an heir. Now they're kind of in the process of like getting situated there, kind of becoming spies, even though they're not used to that lifestyle. That storyline is still kind of in its infancy, like there's definitely stuff building but not much really major has happened there so also in the west you're following Eid and queen sabran she's the queen of innis and so you're basically following the queen as she's just chosen a suitor because one of the dragons who has like been asleep for a long time has just risen and he came to pay her a visit, but it's fine because Eid, Eid went into protective mode. It was so cool because, you know, basically the huge conflict in this world is either, you know, people who worship dragons or people who think that Sabran's bloodline and family were the ones to defeat them and they still protect them with their you know, bloodline being in power. So the whole idea is that while someone of her bloodline is on the throne, they will always be protected. And that the dragon who was like originally defeated, it's called the Nameless One, will never rise again as long as her family is on the throne. So there's a huge group of people who believe this and believe that she has this power. And then this dragon comes and visits them and Eid is the one to protect her unknowingly to everyone else. So everyone thinks, you know, she totally has this power and this protection from her ancestors. But little does everyone know, Eid is there, the one protecting her with her sorcery. It's a little unexplained so far. Um, I'm sure we're going to find out much more about Eid's past at the Priory of the Orange Tree. <laughs> Um, because there was talk of, like, her and her, like, ancestors not defining her magic as sorcery, but to me, it totally seems like Eid's past and her culture might be the genuine ones who are responsible for the protection of Sabran's whole bloodline. At least that's what I'm getting so far. I could, you know, be a little off, but it definitely seems like because the person that um, Eid is, you know, related to and like her culture sort of worships that she calls like the mother, that's what they call them. She was betrothed to Sabran's like great 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 whatever grandfather who was the original one to take down the nameless one right so those two are connected and in the beginning of this book at one point um Sabran has Eid tell the story of like you know them taking down the nameless one just like you know a little story time but Eid sort of slips in there a little detail that isn't true in their kingdom but is true in hers 
and Sabran's like what and Eid's like oh this is how they told me I don't know and then Sabran's like well tell it how we tell it here girl so to me it feels like you know there's an alternative truth and perhaps Eid's people are the actual protectors or defenders of this gift so moving forward Sabran is now engaged basically to this guy and you can tell she she really didn't want to be engaged like that's definitely like something she did not desire there's like a line here where um Eid mentions you know like she has all the power except for this like she was born to you know have an heir and so in this world in order to have an heir you need to be married so because of that whole dragon fiasco um who is like the nameless one's right hand man like his right hand dragon literally showed up and it freaked everyone out including the queen so that really pushed her to get married but it's really really sweet because my favorite part of this so far even though i feel like you know i'm interested to read some other people's thoughts on this because it's definitely like a slow ass burn but i feel like it's being done so well because you can really tell that the queen is you know really finding genuine like comfort and solace in Eid. I feel like because Eid has really put herself forth as like a really honest person so the queen feels like she can let her guard down around her and so it's just been really fun to see how they're relationship is coming together because it's just really interesting in this world that's so like based in hierarchy and power and formality that they are having these little moments of intimacy it's just really sweet and there's even a moment where like Eid's sort of leader comes and visits when Sabran is you know announcing her betrothal basically and he tells Eid like you know we need you back like you've been basically ordered to come back and Eid is like I can't come back right now like I am finally getting close to her and I am finally like in a really good place with her and I can protect her and I'm the best one to protect her and so you can definitely see that some feelings are shining through and I'm super excited to see how it develops more because I feel like Eid will eventually reveal, you know, her true self. And I feel like, you know, even though Sabran doesn't accept this idea of like magic and sorcery now, like I feel like in the future, if she knows that like Eid's been doing it this whole time to protect her and that maybe their, you know, paths are woven together, that, you know, it might make her rethink all she's ever known which i think could be really fucking cool because you can tell obviously she's she's this queen who's been born into this and that is her past like that is all she's ever known and Eid has lived a totally different life so there was just one scene that happened now that has probably been one of my favorites so far where um Eid is in her bedchamber, like getting everything ready for her to go to sleep and then the queen comes in and they end up having this really vulnerable conversation about the queen's nightmares. And I just loved the moment they shared together there. It was really sweet, really interesting, definitely a very pivotal moment. So yeah, that's what's happening in the West. Everyone's a little scared because of the dragons, but we'll see what happens. Now in the East, we're still following, her name is Tane not Tade. I literally combined the names of Tane and one of the girls in the west her name's Trude so I, I think I said Tade. Anyway we're following Tane and she is you know basically her storyline's pretty interesting because she's basically like you know competing with all these other chosen people like kids her age and they're basically like you know battling each other and having challenges with one another to see you know who's the strongest and 
who's most worthy to be a dragon rider. It is a little confusing what's happening in the East at the moment with Tane. Like, I just don't fully know where it's going to lead because it's definitely also still in its beginning stages of the timeline. And then you find out that this Nicholas guy, you know, he's this alchemist and he was banned from the West. He was exiled because he basically... Queen Sabran basically commissioned this man to make her like an immortality serum and he couldn't do it because you know he was a really great alchemist but he was just mourning the loss of his lover and so he just wanted to like get drunk and gamble and he didn't give a shit and after two years Queen Sabran thought he was scamming her so she was like fuck you man get out of here like you're gone I'm exiling you as Book. And the book starts right with this guy, and it starts with the East, with this guy washing up on shore. And you learn that it's this guy from the West who his girlfriend is that girl Trude, who also is like, you know, a lady in waiting or whatever. She works in the palace. He washes up on the shore. Tane finds him the night before choosing day, so she like gets rid of him and he ends up in Nicholas's house. So he's like, that guy, I forget his name, Soljard or something, he is not supposed to be there at all. So yeah, Nicholas does not want him at his house, but eventually he gets found. And the whole thing is that like him and Trude are lovers, the guy who washed up on the shore. And they basically think the nameless one, this dragon, is going to reappear. So they want to go and ask the East for help as if it would like be that easy for them to just like show up and like ask them but they're like really young and naive so that's what he thinks is possible. So that's how you start kind of learning about Nicholas too in his past because you know he's like harboring this fugitive and they get to talking, they get to know each other, then you know everything kind of goes from there. I guess that's it. <laughs> I honestly had to stop myself from reading more because I just needed to take a break but it's been such a good time I love it I feel like if I read it too fast I'm just gonna lose my mind because so much is happening but I just kind of wanted to talk it through with y'all so hopefully any of that made sense it's very complicated of a narrative but I'm trying my best but I thought I would share with you guys my tabs as you can see I've been tabbing a lot I'm like really weird when it comes to tabbing and writing or highlighting my books because I don't really have like an exact system. I know a lot of people do, but I just don't. Um, when it comes to tabs, I have finally just recently started putting like a little key in the beginning of the book. I don't know why I was so chaotic and I used to not do that. Like I know I have full books that have like loads of tabs and now if I go back I will not know what any of them <laughs> mean. So I started doing that and that's really the only you know definitive system I have. I'll show you the tabs I have right now. At the moment I have a tab for Eid, for Sabran, for Dragons. These two I didn't label yet but I will. And then this one is for basically just like really important things that happen in the story that I feel like you know are just really pivotal moments and then the last one is for moments that happen between Eid and Sabran so like them together but as far as like writing in my books and highlighting it really makes no sense I just sort of get a feeling whenever I start a book I'm like this is a book I'll highlight in or it won't be and it'll be more of a book that I write or underline in sometimes I'll do both there's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's just I it's just based on vibes. So in this book, I started to really like want to annotate what was happening because I was thinking so much during it and I wanted to write down what I was thinking. Mostly in this so far, I've been underlining, bracketing little sections and writing in the margins. But yeah, I will check back in with you guys once I've read some more. Hey there, it is a few days later. It is Monday today. Saturday was when I did like a really big chunk of reading and then I read some more yesterday. Um, but you know, the story was just still progressing. But I just got back from class um, probably around like two-ish hours ago. 
and I've spent a lot of time reading tonight and I'm just still really enjoying myself. I definitely find myself liking certain perspectives better, which I feel like is natural, you know, when you're reading a book with multiple perspectives to gravitate towards one, but I'm not finding any of them like really dreadful or boring. I'm still interested in the storylines that aren't like my first favorite. Like my favorite is definitely the storyline with Queen Sabran and Eid in the West because I just really love how their relationship is developing and now Sabran, um, basically she kind of lost someone in her life pretty close to her so that sort of urged the marriage to happen even sooner now than it was before and so she gets married it's a whole thing um there's just a couple really good moments between the two and i feel like what's so precious about watching their relationship blossom is the fact that they're both learning so much about each other and because they have such different upbringings it's like really revolutionary to them as individuals i think you really see both of their walls come down which i feel like is super interesting because for one the queen is obviously in this position of power and so her life is still very limited like socially and in terms of like how much control she has like in terms of autonomy and then you know with Eid she has this sort of she's kind of living a double life so that is a very interesting part of this as well because she was sent here to protect Sabran and you can see that slowly this is becoming a more personal journey and mission of hers so I'm just loving their storyline so far i have no problems with it i just i love it and then you know you're still following loth and his journey and he's definitely going through it he's kind of on his own right now like doing a little side quest if you will and things are definitely coming together you can tell that um this kingdom he's in now definitely doesn't have like free will and definitely switched sides because of something bigger than themselves and then in the east you're following Tane. she just basically like finished with her competition her trials whatever and she's living her best life she is really accomplishing a lot and she just got named basically a dragon rider and got like assigned her dragon which is really cool i'm super interested in her storyline because you know she has this sort of secret because she was the one who saw um the guy in the beginning Soliard wash up on shore and she had to go get rid of him and basically sent him to Nicholas. So this is kind of a secret of hers and if anyone finds out that she was like responsible for any part in that she could get into a lot of trouble but I'm more interested with her to see how she uses this authority and how her relationship with her dragon flourishes like i'm just so excited to see that pan out but yeah that's mostly it for now i'm up to page 273 i'm i'm getting through it guys this book is like to me the definition of that tiktok sound um if you know you know where it's like why be sad when you can just be gone because i am so gone when i'm reading this that's how you know it's a good book. Like, I am so immersed in what's happening when I'm reading this. I am not here anymore. Also, guys, this is so random, like, but I need to confess that when I read this book, it's in a British accent in my head. Like, I feel like most of them wouldn't have British accents, but I feel like a majority of them would. 
and I just hear it in a British accent. It's just one of those things where it doesn't sound like it does not sound correct and as profound as it should be in an American accent. It just doesn't cut it. It just do it just does not make the cut. The visceral reaction that this gets out of me is genuinely ridiculous. <laughs> that is so precious. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> the notes I'm making here are so ridiculous. <laughs> Just read that. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Hi guys, it is a few days later and I have a bit of an update here. So um, as you might have saw, I did continue to read this when I was at my family's over the weekend and I got up to page 392. I am really close to the um, third little section. I have one more chapter before I get here. And oh my god, like there's just so much happening. I think I'm gonna have to like get into some spoilers because I feel like that'll be fun. For the both of us. If you don't want to see spoilers, I'll put a little thing on the screen. Where to begin? Okay, so we'll go from like least exciting, I guess, to the most. So first in the east, we have um, Tane and Nicholas, and their storyline's definitely building. Um, you know, I literally called it because at some point. It was really obvious to me that Nicholas was going to sort of blackmail Tane because he wanted to basically, like, he still wants to make this immortality serum. And so he needs, like, the blood and scale of dragons for that. And that kind of plotline is going in an interesting direction because, like, now he's on a pirate ship. I don't even know, man. Which is cool because, you know, now there's pirates. So he's on a pirate ship. Tane, like, confessed to her dragon and all of that. Yeah, now she has, she has a dragon. And she's definitely in some sort of trouble. But that's kind of, like, in my mind, on the back burner. Because then, let's go to the west. So we have um, Loth and Kit. Kit is no longer with us. I was pretty shocked when he died. I just wasn't expecting it. They just seemed like they were a coupling that was going to stay together throughout the story. But, you know, Loth is on his own now. I mean, that kind of happened a while ago. But now since I'm talking about spoilers, I'm going to mention that. What's really wild about Loth's storyline now is that he's basically at the Priory of the Orange Tree. And he's finding out all of Eid's secrets and he is shook. He is not okay. And it's really interesting because you can tell that the the place Eid comes from and their culture is definitely more accurate. It's so obvious that they're just not right. Like you can definitely tell that where Eid grew up in the story that they know and have been told is more accurate than the one that Innis is relying on, you know? And so Loth is like figuring this all out. He's getting told all this stuff about Eid and he is so shocked. I even like wrote down at one point that I was just experiencing so much secondhand embarrassment from Loth now just discovering that Eid is not 
who she said she was when we as readers knew this whole time because you know Loth, Eid, Sabran, they were all besties so you know it's a little it's a little awkward for him. Let's get to the juicy stuff shall we? Eid and Sabran. Oh my gosh you know I think the last thing I told y'all was that Sabran got you know married and everything <laughs> and wow <laughs> we've come a long way. One of my favorite scenes was like basically her husband um kind of convinced her that they should go and like visit the people out in the streets and like you know show them their queen and you know that she cares and whatever Eid was like um I don't really know about that but okay and he actually asks Eid at one point for advice like if they should do it and she's like no please don't and then he does anyway and that was such an action-packed scene of like them going out into the town and obviously it didn't go well because this whole time people have been like coming at Sabran like trying to harm her like there's been multiple like they call them cutthroats it's basically like assassins that are like infiltrating the palace and Eid has to like secretly go and kill so she's like yeah I don't think we should let her outside of the palace since people are trying to murder her while she's in here it's gonna be way worse out there and it was but honestly it was such a good scene to read it felt like a movie it was so action-packed like I said and so fun to read because you know Eid goes into full like warrior mode like so many people are coming at the queen and she is not letting it happen but I gotta say okay the two most surprising things were the fact that the king who just recently married Sabran he gets killed during all of this which was quite the shocker but then after that a little while later there's kind of like a whole other sort of attack that happens and you find out that Sabran is with child which is like a huge deal because basically it's pretty upsetting but the whole point of her and her life is so she can produce an heir so like this whole narrative is basically her being pressured into getting married and producing an heir that has to be a girl so she does get pregnant at one point and then because of this other attack she loses the baby but not just that she loses the ability to ever get pregnant again which is so crazy like that is definitely a huge fucking turning point in this story because without another heir essentially her community her country is going to think that there's no one like no one that will be from her bloodline to like protect them so if there's no one in her bloodline to be a royalty next they're gonna think they're in big trouble which the thing is is that they already are they already are in so much trouble but anyway point is because of this uh thing that had happened it really brings Eid and Sabran together it's just so like rewarding to see like these two people form this really beautifully matured relationship when so much of the book is based around this like political religious war and oh my god you guys I read a, I read a little something that I was not ready for I have so far loved the slow burn of their relationship because it's a slow burn but they're still like very much in each other's orbit like they're always sort of together so everything's building and it still like is satisfying to me but they just had a moment recently and I did not think it was coming this soon it's actually pretty interesting how like how you see um so Bron, her personality like what what is being depicted to us I feel like has been such a dramatic change because at first we're getting this sort of caricature of a queen 
and then we get to actually see like her layers being peeled back and how she is just as a person i just always feel like that kind of dynamic is really interesting in any kind of storytelling where someone who typically is seen as just someone of authority and someone who is just cold in nature eventually like warm up to someone and like i said it was pretty obvious that she didn't want to get married and like have kids and fulfill all of that like just by context clues but then there's actually a scene where she admits that to Eve and that's just like kind of another example of like these walls coming down that is so intriguing okay another part is that you know um Eve is like supposed to only be there for a short amount of time and she already got her time sort of extended and as you're reading it you're like okay she's deaf like there's no way she's gonna be able to leave Sabran and I've been really worried anticipating that moment and she even says at one point like she admits to herself that now like she will not be able to leave because of like how close they've gotten how much they've shared at this point and I literally didn't read the next chapter because I have such a feeling that because of that they're gonna take her from me like why would they let me have this good thing they're just gonna take it from me I just know it oh I totally forgot here's a great moment here's another good moment Sabran is totally on to Eve because oh my god i just called her eve oh my god don't look at me the killing eve fan in me is not okay right now so Bron is totally on to eve because she even said after you know eve had to protect her when they went into the town she was like um i just saw you kill like four people have you been the one killing all the assassins that are coming after me and eve had to be like me no so i kind of love that sabran is just like really smart and is very easily putting all these pieces together and i love that she kind of like contradicts you know her stereotype like who she was brought up to be she doesn't want these traditional things she's pretty clear about her affection towards eve and i think the only thing that really like drives a wedge between the two is the fact that you know, Sabran was raised to believe one thing and Eid another. And even that I can feel is like wavering in Sabran because everything has just been going so wrong. So moving forward, I'm scared. Quite frankly, I don't really care that much about all the other perspectives. I don't find it extremely like boring or tedious to read i just don't care as much so anyway i'm gonna stop talking now and i'm gonna read a little it is sometime later i finally got around to reading some more of this i just um finished the chapter for the last um like the last chapter of the second section and gosh it was just so like intense like the drama you guys the drama but i was so right upsettingly i was right because just as things were getting so good they took it away from me i'm so upset because now we're going into the third section there's five i just checked because okay i'm gonna say a spoiler so basically what happened is fucking comb that guy oh my god he's the worst man he's horrible he's the one who like got rid of loth because he thought him and sabran were getting too close so same thing happened now with eve and he was gonna literally exile her and so she had to run away are you joking i'm so bummed because the whole third chapter or section doesn't have any point of view from the west like none it's all south and east and i know we'll still get Eid's point of view which is great but i want to know how sabran is gonna react to like this happening so that's a bummer i'm gonna try to like keep going but i'm pretty bummed about that so and today out of all days 
is um the day that we find out that they cancel warrior nun yeah seriously fuck netflix fuck the next hundred pages of this book like it'll be fine but i'm not gonna be as excited about it okay so a bit of an update i started reading it i'm in the east at the moment and i am still having a good time because i'm actually finding it really interesting how now we're at this point where tane is um on feather island which was like the other position other than being like a dragon rider where it's like just less desirable and more about like research i guess because that's basically where she's being like put as a punishment so it is really interesting to see like where her storyline is going because her whole story kind of just started with her you know being so obsessed and lusting after this dream of hers but it actually you know got like two people killed for no reason and like you know she was dealing with a lot of guilt and also greed and so it's interesting to see now how she's beginning this transformation on this island Hi folks! So, as you can tell, we are in a new place. Last night, I read a good chunk of it because I just wanted to, you know, get back into it. I definitely got into a little slump when I was moving and everything. I got through this last night a little bit, and I actually got through the third part, and I'm up to the fourth part, which is called Fine is the Queendom. I'm so excited because here's the thing. I was anticipating not liking that like third little section because we weren't really gonna be in the west or anything and I was sort of dreading it but to be honest I ended up really appreciating what was in this third section because since we got to go back to Ede's homeland we really got to learn like everything we were missing when it came to Ede like there were so many pieces that weren't fully explained and that got really developed here also you got to see like Eid and Loth reunite which was very interesting and I feel like this whole section was really about tying all the pieces together because everything is just coming together from every angle so Nicholas is on this pirate ship and he's like doing work for like the pirate in charge and he's discovering this thing about jewels and it's very complicated but he's doing his thing there and then Tane has been banished to Feather Island and she's doing her thing there and the whole jewel thing is very connected it is so hard to explain because there are so many layers to this but just know it's coming together beautifully so now that I'm going into the fourth section I'm very excited because this is gonna be a bit of a spoiler but since Eid was at her old home, she hadn't been there for like nine years, she realized that the new Prioress is just like corrupt, not like the OG. Because for her, in her culture, there's like a Prioress that's alive and then they all worship the mother. So the current Prioress is whack, Eid is learning. She basically doesn't want to follow through with the last Prioress's wishes to protect virtuedom and you know the the west and Queen Sabran. so eventually after some like investigating and digging and lots of thinking Eid decides to run away with Loth which is crazy too because there's like this rule that like if someone comes into the Priory they can't leave because of what they know so now they're running away together and in the next chapter or in the West. So, very exciting stuff. Hi folks, just wanted to let you know that I am now this far into Priory. I am up to page 570 and last night I read a huge chunk and 
I can't even explain like what this book is doing to me anymore. I definitely got to like one of the best parts already. If you know, you know. I personally um, looked up like fan art and just like a bunch of questions I had about this book as I started reading it and I definitely like, I didn't spoil anything for myself. I just like saw some teasers if you will so there's definitely this one scene and this one line in this book that is like really infamous and i got to it i got to the dancing scene i got to the whole ordeal afterwards and you guys it was so good it was so good i feel like their separation made their reunion so much stronger i was definitely like i said dreading that third section but it makes sense. It makes sense in this storytelling. This one section I just read last night was so action-packed. I don't even know how to describe what it feels like reading this because not only am I immersed in another world, but it's like I'm in another timeline. And I'm actually glad that I've been taking my time reading this because the longevity of my reading experience with this has made this timeline feel very like just real to me but yeah you guys I was crying last night over this like not even a particularly sad cry it's just all the emotions were bubbling up that's what was happening because I was just like living for it I'm really curious how this is gonna wrap up because things are really coming full circle. Just everything about the lore and the history in this book is so interesting and written so well, so intriguing, and I love that both the East and the West and the South tie together so seamlessly but also feel very separated and because like you know Eid was originally sent away, went to the South, is now going back to the West, went to the West, the whole like scene of her and Loth getting Sabran out of the tower basically and saving her and all of the drama there was <laughs> everything. I love too that like Loth and Sabran are kind of learning that their faith might have been a lie this whole time. You know, they're very skeptical obviously, but they're also so trusting of Eid that like they're willing to take a bit of her word for it and so I think that's really interesting that like you're watching a bit of like the collapse of their faith because everything else is like spiraling around them and clearly the nameless one the dragon is about to say hi so they have to be more reasonable and rational about it rather than relying on their faith. And then everything in the East with Tane and, oh my gosh, let's just, hold on. We need to talk about the jewel in Tane's stomach? What? Like, I'm so curious because, okay, Eid has the jewel now from that one person. So Eid has that jewel and then they need the other jewel because they're made of the two magics that they need to defeat the Nameless One, basically in like the most simplest terms. And I'm guessing the other jewel is the one Tane ripped out of her fucking stomach. That was so shocking to me. Like, I'm still so intrigued by that storyline because who put a jewel in Tane's stomach? I'm dying to know personally. So can't wait for that to be revealed. But I think this is gonna be really interesting to see get wrapped up in these last few pages. I guess it's probably around like 300 because if they need both jewels and the you know characters from the West meet with the characters from the East who have never interacted yet, I'm gonna be so interested in that interaction. You guys, you guys, I did not need to cry this much. Here's the thing. Why is this happening? Like, <laughs> fair warning, no one read up to page 617. 
okay? I am literally not good right now. Like, I did not think this book was gonna make me cry at all, but I have cried like three to six times within like this last like bit. This last bit has just wrecked me. This one bit though, this one bit, like, no, this is an upset cry. Like. I'm not even having a good time right now. I'm upset. I'm like, they better fucking fix what just fucking happened or I'm gonna lose my shit. Like they have to, right? Like they have to, like there's no other way to, like they have to fix whatever is going on here because I'm not okay right now. I think this is really funny that people like romanticize writing in their books. I mean like as you should, but this is literally what my annotations are. Okay, I'm not good. I just got to part four. So first of all, I thought this book was 848 pages long. Apparently it's only 804. And I'm up to page 623 now. So I mean, I am like right at the finish line. That last little chapter, hmm. Or I have to laugh because how, why, when, where, <laughs> there is no reason for a book to be making me feel so hard. <laughs> like, um, leave me alone. I'm definitely getting through it though, as well as going through it. I just had to update y'all on my mental state at this point. Wow. Wow. I am definitely like so invested like it's it's hard to see clearly <laughs> like do you know what i mean like i am partially in this universe but also partially in an entire other one that's where i'm gonna end tonight um going into part four i'm scared for my life personally but we'll see how it goes Okay, so I'm about to paint my room, so it's a little all over the place in here, but I'm on page 756 out of, I think, 804, so I'm like really almost done with this, y'all. I think the last time I updated y'all, I told you like something really significant happened between Eden and Sabran, um, but I failed to mention the fact that there was like a huge plot, like reveal i guess it kind of was like a twist but it was more of like this huge reveal that happened which was very exciting because as i mentioned while you're reading this you kind of just don't know the whole story about everything yet because there's so much to know there's so much history and now we've kind of moved into this ending where you know the whole goal of this is to find a way to defeat the nameless one this dragon that's going to rise after these thousand years so you know they're coming up with this plan now and now like the east and the west are kind of converging kind of forming an alliance that has not been formed for like just so many years it's truly like unheard of but it's actually really interesting how Eid and Sabran and Loth really kind of like compromised and figured it out together that this was the best solution even if all of the people that you know Sabrat rules over would be very like confused and possibly not into it but it obviously is the best idea for like them to work together in order to slay this dragon i'm honestly like so anxious to finish this because i'll definitely finish it today and I kind of don't want it to be over even though I've been reading this for like a month now and I said to my friend last night I was talking to her about it how like I'm glad I took my time with this because for me like this book defies time like I feel like I, I've lived a year in this book genuinely like that's just how much stuff has happened I feel like I've lived 
multiple years so i'm really excited to see how it ends it's honestly unbelievable the progression of eve and saban's relationship and how much you get to know about both of them individually and then how they evolve it's just been such a beautiful story so yeah i will let y'all know what i think once i finish it the next day because I was busy painting my room and I got really close to the end and then I was like no I can't finish it today aka yesterday it was just too much I just didn't want to finish it yet and then I read some of it this morning I could have easily finished it but I was like no I have to wait I don't know what it was I just couldn't let it end and I I understand that so I just finished it. <laughs> oh my god. This is just about to be so incoherent. I don't even know. First of all, I cried. Something about like <laughs> everything. Something about every part of this um deeply wounded me. So like let's let's talk about the ending a bit. I feel like the whole build up to the battle was great and the battle itself like you know it was happening for sure i do feel like after the battle it like just kind of was like sort of it kind of fell a little flat for me which i feel like is understandable just because there's so much build up to this like ultimate battle of slaying these dragons and then it's like what now i feel like um, I wasn't super into Nicholas's story the whole time. He was definitely like my least favorite, but there were parts that I did like. Like, I definitely enjoyed reading about his past and his grief and his love story. But I mean, I feel like for me, he was a character that just like moved things along, you feel. But <sighs> me clenching this book, eat and so run y'all don't even don't even look at me i'm so serious i'm not good you know i mm, i knew what was gonna happen you know but to read it no i'm not like unhappy with it because okay spoiler Eid literally slayed the fucking nameless one Eid and tane together so that was like crazy i just knew i mean from the beginning eat is that bitch and i fucking love her and because of all of that they basically like gave her the honor of being the prioress at the priory of the orange tree and that is just honestly such a great outcome because obviously eat will be able to like rule in this way that will be like very necessary and accommodating for the new world that they're entering but it's also so fucking sad that her and Safran have to be separated and oh my god y'all at the end where they're like 10 years and not a sunrise more or whatever seriously like that last scene with the two of them don't it's still sort of a happy ending because they're still gonna be like together and in love, but they're gonna be separated. So there's this like sense of longing that you don't get like resolved at the end, which feels very on brand for them. But wow, I just, wow. I don't even know what to say. I literally feel like I lived a thousand <laughs> lifetimes. Like what the hell? I do feel like the ending was a little underwhelming though. I totally feel like there could have been more. Should I say that? I feel that way though. That's how I feel. I feel like there could have been a little more. Or like an epilogue. Like come on. There was so much that I loved about this. Like no regrets. This was such a great experience. I feel like this, this is like a 4.5. I don't know if I'm gonna round it 
down to four or up to five but 4.5 feels right because there were definitely like you know just just little little things that I would have liked to see done in a different way or embellished on more um and more like fleshed out and more established like there were definitely just like so many characters that she could have just went in on so many other like characters in the history and I feel like the ending makes me like kind of drop it down a little bit of a point because I'm just not totally completely satisfied with it but I'm not I'm not like mad at it I just want more that's just kind of the feeling I'm left with not even more of like all of the rest of the book I feel like all of the rest of the book was like good fine perfect just the ending like you could have given me like 50 more pages I don't know but yeah wow I mean y'all already know loved the characters I loved how high fantasy this was it was honestly like the definition of like an epic novel it was so epic like it was just so all-encompassing so consuming massive world building honestly just so impressive these are all my tabs a final look at all the tabs i wrote so much in this book i literally vandalized the shit out of this these were my tabs yeah okay well i guess that's it <laughs> that's it thank y'all for joining me please 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 let me know your thoughts if you've read this book i am all ears but yeah hopefully i encouraged y'all to maybe take a peek at this or you know just conquer a big book fear but yeah this was so good i'm so happy i read it i can't believe it's over i'm gonna go look at some fan art now so i'll see you guys soon hope y'all enjoyed thanks for being here bye friends Ooh.